Welcome to a Watch With Colour from the amazing Ashford Castle in County Mayo. Over the years, this part of the country has seen its fair share of film stars, most memorably John Wayne in the movie The Quiet Man. Later, myself and my guest, television presenter John Stapleton, will be following in the footsteps of the Duke. Nineteen fifty one was a great year for Ashford Castle and the nearby village of Kong. The electricity supply board brought the power lines and the Hollywood director John Ford brought John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara to film The Quiet Man. A lot of the filming was done here in the grounds of Ashford Estate, and the locations remain a huge tourist attraction to this day. John Ford's parents were both from the Kong area, so the director knew the Ashford Estate well. During filming, the cast stayed at the hotel, and the bridge here at the entrance to the castle was used in several scenes. Joining me today to recreate another of the Quiet Man locations is GM TV presenter and broadcaster John Stapleton. 12 minutes past one this morning, some eight tankers uh, left this refinery on the heavy police escort. Some of them had actually police officers in the cab, others were followed by police Land Rovers, and behind the entire convoy were members of the local riot squad, escorting them to some... John, it's good to see you here. Thank you for having me. Delighted to be here. One of my favourite parts of the world, this. With an name like Stapleton now, there's bound to be a few Irish connections there. Well, there might well be. Funnily enough, when I was uh, on Watchdog, uh, uh, a lady Stapleton wrote to me. And she didn't. And she investigated the uh, the family name, and she told me that there was a bunch of Staplesons here in in the west of Ireland, around around Tipperary historically, and another bunch in in Yorkshire. I'm not quite sure which one I belong to, but I, also when we went on holiday to the Caribbean, uh, to Jamaica, we came across a guy uh, on the beach called Levi. And one of my friends asked him what his second name was. He said, "Oh, it's a funny name." He said, "You'd, you'd never guess it." And we said, "No, go on, tell us what it is." And he said. Uh, well, it's Stapleton. And there's a whole lot of black Stapletons all over the Caribbean. So I've got black brothers as well. St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, Jamaica. So who knows? My own origins, you know, are in the northwest of England. Now, how do you feel if you, having signed a finance deal for, say, a £500 washing machine, you discovered that the real price you had to pay was more than double that? As a kid, I always wanted to be a newspaper reporter. I don't know why I did, and uh, no history of it in the family at all. And I wrote to... I think 33 newspapers when I was a kid at school. Well, most of them didn't reply, but I followed up the uh, letter with uh, banging on the door. The editor said, go on, give us a job. And eventually one of them did. And uh, I spent, spent about six or seven years in newspapers, finishing up in Fleet Street. And then one day got a call from an old pal of mine in newspapers who said uh, they were starting uh, This Is Your Life on ITV with Eamon Andrews. And they asked uh, me and a pal of mine called Jack Crawshaw if we'd like to go along and be the researchers. And, and that was it. It went long enough. I was a researcher on This Is Your Life back in 1969. And the first one I did was Des O'Connor. I remember it very well. And uh, from that, I moved on to a local news and magazine programme that Eamon did for Thames Television called The Today Programme and got on screen as a reporter there. Tell me some of the most interesting things that have, would have happened to you, you know, throughout your career. Career wise? Well, I suppose, uh, I suppose the most dramatic, really, was uh, when I was, on, I was on Newsnight for the BBC at one stage. And uh, I was in El Salvador, actually, covering the elections in El Salvador in 1981 when we suddenly got a call from London saying, look, it looks like we might be at war with Argentina. Uh, you were down there, somewhere near Argentina, is it? And so we went off, and uh, I thought, I'll be over in about ten days' time, but uh, not, not at all, we were there for three months. In the studio here in London just a moment ago, John, Dennis Healy was suggesting that the sinking of the Belgrano at the weekend might have engendered a mood of revenge in Argentina. Have you seen any evidence of that? No, to be quite honest, we haven't. In fact, I have been uh, amazed by uh, the attitude of Argentine people here during the last two days. We anticipated a backlash against the British community and indeed perhaps ourselves. That has not happened. It's a very interesting experience because we were correspondents behind the enemy line, as it were, in the night. 
the Belgrano went down, being English was not a, a very popular thing to be in Argentina. But generally speaking, we were treated remarkably well. It was a bit of a novelty, really. You know, they used to say, well, come to dinner. We're having the enemy to dinner, darling. Yeah. <laughs> um, but that was a fascinating experience. And I was there, as, uh, as I say, I was there for, for three whole months. Well, what about hobbies? Do you have any? Well, I have a passion, <laughs> and that's Manchester City. Someone has to support. No, no, jokes apart. But my grandfather supported Manchester City because we come from that part of the world. My dad did. And I've now brainwashed my son Nicholas into supporting Manchester City as well, even though we live in the south of England. It is a great act of faith to support Manchester City, and you need a bit of a sense of humour as well sometimes. Well, I'll wish you all the best with them in the future anyway. Thanks. But have you any interest in the arts? Yes, I have. I mean, I, I'm an amateur, you know, but I like painting. We live in a, a big Victorian house, and you, you'll think it's a philistine thing, but lots of wall to fill. <laughs> so what better <laughs> to fill it with than painting? <laughs> but I've got quite a lot scattered all over the house, watercolours oils as well. But I'm no expert. I mean, I, I just like, I, if I like the look of the painting yeah. and I can afford it, I buy it. Could you see a John Stippleton hanging on the wall at any time? Well, who knows? <laughs> who knows? With your help. Ashford was built in the 13th century by the Norman de Burgo family, but it has been altered and added to many times over the centuries. The estate's 350 acres of woodland on the banks of the Corrib is the former home of the Guinness family. Today, it is the most exclusive country hotel in Ireland. If you want to get around Ashford Estate, this is the way to do it. The equestrian centre and the grounds of the castle have horses and ponies to suit everyone. And you never know, you might even get to meet the Duke. This is Cohan's Bar in Kong Village, where the famous fight scene from The Quiet Man ends with that haymaker of a punch delivered by John Wayne. In fact, the building never had a pub license at all. It was always a shop, but it's still something of a mecca for the film fans who come here. The whole town is a shrine to The Quiet Man, from film memorabilia to tours of the locations used in the film. Fifty years on, John Wayne and Maureen O'Hara are still here. Barry Burke is a talented young painter based in Kilmain near Kong. Working primarily in oils, his style and focus are extremely wide ranging. As far as I remember, I think I was, I was either four or five when I started and was drawing more than painting, now I say I was doing. At that time, it was cartoons, things that children would be interested in most of all. And from then on, it just gave me a buzz. So I just kept at it. I liked the reaction I got from that particular drawing that's been going ever since. But whenever I look at the collection of work that you have, and there's a lot of it, you know, it seems to me that you, you just love to paint. Would that be right? Yeah, definitely. It's a, the one passion I've had from when I was a child. I, all I know is I wanted to paint and draw for the rest of my life. And to do that, you had to go to college. I had the intentions of doing graphic design, because from what I heard, it was where the money was to be made. And as I, we all sampled different parts of it. So when I sampled the graphic design, it just wasn't my cup of tea, basically. And I had sampled in the painting section, which came later in that year. So that's what I knew had to be for me, because it was just constantly working, observational painting and drawing, just everything I loved, really. 